right. In this section here, we are going to implement some endpoint security protection. All right. Let's jump right into it. First things first, we're going to log into our domain controller. So go ahead and log in with me. First few things we're going to do to implement endpoint security is create a group. And we're going to create a group called IT staff. So let's go to tools. Let's go to Active Directory Users and Computers. It's taking a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and click it again just in case it didn't register. All right. So let's go ahead and go to users and add a new group. Select this new group icon. Okay, the group name is IT staff. Let's select okay. All right. Now, while we're under here, under the users OU, we want to select domain admins Okay, and then we want to control click local admins and we want to right click them and add them to our IT staff group. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna click this here. Check names, okay. Now we're gonna leave this open. All right, let's go back to our server manager. This time let's go to tools and we wanna to go to Active Directory Administrative Serv Center. Okay, once this opens up for you, I want you to click this corp local right here on the left-hand pane. All right, after you select this, all right, in the main pane, I want you to go ahead and select system. And then I want you to go to password settings, okay? So just click this button here and let's click systems. And let's scroll down a little bit for password settings container. All right, there's nothing in here right now. Okay, so we're gonna add something in here. These are the settings that we're gonna add. Let's right click. Right click inside of here. Okay, if you miss what I just did, just double click this. Then it took me to this main page. So I'm going to right click here, go to new password settings. All right, the name, right? The precedence level. this 10. Okay, now we have to set the rest of the setting. And based off of these, we're going to switch this to 20. right here is going to be 30. Select this and enforce a lockout policy. 
I'm going to change this to three, this to 10, and this right here is going to be 20. Okay, and I think that's, uh, we're going to add the IT staff. Okay, so we got account policy 10, 20, 24. Okay, 3, 10, 20. And we are making sure it's fulfilling what the requirements are here. I'm gonna hit okay. All right. If you wanna make sure you got it right, here's a nice picture for you. And they actually have the settings here too. That's pretty cool. All right, so number 10. We've already done this, we've done this, and we hit okay. Does the IT account policy fine grain password policy exist? Yes, it does. It is right here now. We can go ahead and close this out and go to the next section. All right, now we're going to implement a GPO for this. All right, so let's open up our AD users and computers. All right, let's create a new organizational unit for IT computers. Okay, so we are going, let's go right click this, go to new organizational unit called IT computers. All right, so we have this here. Now we're gonna to go to the server manager and hit tools. Go to the GPO, group policy management. All right, so once yours comes up, I want you to go ahead and select the corp515support.com. All right, you're going to right click this IT computers container we just created and create a GPO to link it over there. And the name of it is going to be here. Okay. And we're going to hit OK. Now let's expand this IT computers container and right click our new GPO and edit it. Now follow me, we're gonna to go to computer configurations, policies, window settings, security settings, local policies, which is right here, and then security options, okay? Now we need to set these security options. All right, so what are we doing now? We are creating a group policy object or a group policy that is going to harden our endpoints, okay? Specifically the endpoints in our IT computers OU. So first of all, we have to disable the account guest, which is right here. Let's go ahead and open this up, find this policy disabled. Okay. All right, account rename administrator account. Let's go ahead and rename this. Let us know in the comment section why we would want to eliminate the administrator account or why we would want to rename it. Okay. Let's scroll down to interactive blog on sections. And we want to do not display the last user's name. Double click this, define this policy and have it enabled. Okay. All right, message text for users attempting to log in. Let's define this with this message here. Okay. 
in the title right below it. Let's define this, with this title here. All right. Okay, now that we have that done, let's go to step seven. Now follow me. From here, we're going to go to policies, right? This time, whoops. We're going to go to administrative templates. Then we're going to go to Windows component and then scroll down to Windows Defender. This is right here. All right. So over here, let's go ahead and open this turn off Windows Defender option. Let's turn this off. Okay. Now you're going to set it to disable. Okay. You do not want to give your users an option to disable their antivirus. Okay. So we're going to hit okay here. Now let's go ahead and go to turn off routine remediation. And we want to disable this too. If you disable or do not configure this policy setting, Windows Defender automatically takes action on all detected threats after a non-configurable delay of approximately five seconds. Let's hit okay. Scroll down. What actually go up? Let's go to real time protection. I double clicked it. Let's turn this off. The first one. We're going to disable it. And now we're going to close this. Okay. We're going to close the editor. We've made all the changes we needed to make to this policy for now. What? Whoa, whoa. Let's, let me hit OK here then close it. Okay, now let's go click here. All right. Whoops. Let's right click this policy. And we want to save it. Save a report. So right click the secure admin workstation policy. And let's save a report to our desktop. Okay, save it to your desktop because you're gonna get scored on it. All right, let's go to the next section. True or false. The default domain policy GPO defines password settings for all domain members. Do you think it's true? Do you think it's false? Do you think it's true? Do you think it's false? Fine grain password policies may be applied to what? May be applied to what to Active Directory objects? Fine grain policies may be applied to what? Global groups, user accounts, boom. Which of the following best defines a benefit of linking GPOs to OUs? You cannot link GPOs to Active Directory OUs. Linking a group policy object to an Active Directory OU causes the setting to be applied to that spe specific Active Directory site. Linking a GPO to an Active Directory OU causes the settings to be applied to all domain users and computers. Linking a GPO to an Active Directory OU allows administrators to tailor settings specifically for the users and computers stored in that OU. All right, y'all, good job. What do we do here? We hardened our servers by creating a tougher password policy, right? That was defined for our global groups. Okay, this is definitely something I want you all to come back and play with. 
getting familiar with GPOs, right? This was, it was a pretty short lab, but it was definitely resourceful. If you enjoyed this lab, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to our channel for future videos. Thank you very much. See you on the next section.